Hello, and welcome to another one of my streams. This is only the third proper stream for August, because I've been kind of busy, as I mentioned in the last stream. But um, I thought for this one I'll look at some Atari games, because for the next main release, not the one that's just out today, or yesterday, or... Wednesday? I think it actually got delayed until yesterday, didn't it? Thursday. Uh, this this missed the deadline for that, that uh, release. This is Danger Express, but it will be in a next month's release, supported officially. Um, it was dumped a while back, but there was some some controversy with it where the dumper then asked for it to not be in main. It didn't get added to main for ages, and now it's been put back in, and I don't know. It's a bit of a mess. But anyway, this is an Atari prototype I'll be playing first, and the reason I'm doing this stream is because this one will be supported in the next version of main. I think I just said that, but sometimes I can repeat things. And, um, yeah, everybody's mentioning Pit Fight, and, um, yeah, Pit Fight is a pretty bad game. I think th this kind of feels like it's going to be another entry in that series it's kind of pit fighter garden guardians of the hoodish um but this one's called danger express but anyway welcome to everybody who is here early so you know we've got a uh, carlo r09 the fellow jasper bob loblaw um i know we have some people early but they're not, no longer in the uh, the chat message let's see if we can get good live chats here there no youtube's decided to cut off the earlier uh, joiners um we have aussie guy we have wolf as we have costado we have Zeta or Zeta Reserve. Uh, did I say Custardo? We've got Custardo. Um, the Gaming Hell YouTube thing. And uh, yeah, I, is that everybody? I hope that's everybody because, you know, for some reason my chat did freeze earlier. But fingers crossed we do not have the uh, whole messed up chat thing again this time. Anyway, let me turn up the volume. This one's quite low in general, so I'm going to set the volume quite high. 
Um, let me go to horizontal view and uh, let me full screen this. So if you've been watching the attract mode, you get the general idea. Rather than a side scrolling beat em up, this is an into the screen beat em up. So is Pit Fighter worse than Violence Fight? Um, I probably prefer Pit Fighter, Wolfass, but that's just my opinion. Uh, hey, Mr. Midas 2K and Andy also joining in. I um, hope you're doing well. I believe you've both been here before. I've seemed to recognize the names. Anyway, let's credit up oh, and press play on button two to start. Um, I think maybe the buttons are swapped, but we'll see. So, okay, your mission, should you accept it, is to stop Ernest Blowfish, international thief, smuggler, and extortionist. So, yeah, apparently you can't select level yet, it's just telling you what level you can play. Okay, stroking his snake there, and calling me a maggot. So, yeah, you've got your digitised graphics, very reminiscent of, you know, Pit Fighter, Gardens of the Horde. In fact, a lot of these graphics are kind of say it looks like into the screen guard is the hood. But, um, you know, people picking up barrels and throwing them at you. I don't know if this was uh, developed before or after Gardens of the Hood. It's, I think it's about May, June, 92. I had to hazard a guess I'd say after, but um, it just feels like they're trying to do something a little bit different. But, yeah. Now, there are other games with similar into the screen scrolling levels. Konami's Spy has one. Um, it's not great. But let's see how Atari fared with this. You do have a jump button, you see, and you have a duck button. Which doesn't help you there. If you want to duck and fire, you can duck and fire. Yeah, this is very 90s, isn't it? Very, very 90s. So we've done the alleyway. Get a bit of bonus time. Get some bonus of breaking stuff. No bad thing. And we are on to the train top. Now, I'm guessing this is called Danger Express because of the train theme. You'll notice the the screen clear effects all train based. And um, yeah, now I'm actually on the roof of a train. Not the first game to put me on the roof of a train. But. Um, yeah, it works for this type of perspective because you're walking along one long straight thing. Which doesn't, as far as I know, corner at any point. Got some weapons, now I'm back to punching though. Isn't that a nice little chainsaw? Oh yeah, you have to jump the gaps if that's not obvious, otherwise you fall down. I thought there was going to be a chainsaw. There's a chainsaw in the track mode. Yeah, if you go too near the edge, you'll, you'll wobble. And don't fall off. Bit of blood, bit of gore. Don't quite know what I'm collecting. So again, is that the chainsaw? Is the blue on the chainsaw? Apparently not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how the weapons work in this. Oh yeah, you're probably meant to duck under those things, uh, which I failed to do because they did it correct uh, me very quickly. So I don't know where these guys are appearing from. They just don't appear. And that is probably the front of the train. Yeah, Devastators. Again, another Canary one where they did into the screen. G.I. Joe as well, but that's more of a shooter than um, this. But this does have some shooting, obviously. But uh, not the most common perspective. I think um, Golden Axe 2 has a few bits that go into the screen. Uh, SNK Super Spy, again, a different type of game. But it's not the most common perspective in the game. Um, how did this not get released? I guess it just didn't test well or something. I mean, that's usually the reason for Atari games not getting released. They did a lot of location testing, and if a game didn't test well, it just got canned. Not, maybe just not as compelling as, um, say, Guardians of the Hood, and that's uh, saying something. There's a bomb. So there's a bit of a priority glitch up there, which may happen on the original board, I don't know. The time is behind the door. 
Good job. Now go into Blowfish's casino and find the strong man. Um, yeah, most beat em ups don't really have any connection between the characters you're, you're beating up. They don't work as teams or really acknowledge what else is going on other than try and surround you. Uh, it's kind of one of the things you, you do start to notice that about these games after a while. If enemies actually teamed up and worked together, and you know, that'd be a lot more advanced AI, but. They generally just try and surround you in different positions rather than any kind of special moves together. You know, they don't care until you're attacking them. But that's that's true for most games. Even games today, a lot of them, every single character just feels so isolated and independent from everything else. It's like nobody else exists apart from their interaction with you. It's always something I thought could be improved in games, like, you know, characters listening in on conversations and reacting to what you say, even though they're not part of a conversation, you know, one on many rather than one on one interactions. What hardware is this? This is the Atari G42 hardware. It is, I believe, the same hardware that uh, Guardians of the Hood runs on. So it's, yeah, it's basically it's scrolling, scaling sprites and otherwise fairly standard Atari stuff. I don't think the prototype's protected. I don't think they got to the stage of implementing much in the way of protection on it. So yeah, that is clearly a chainsaw graphic, so why does it give me this as a weapon? I'd, I'd really like the chainsaw that you can see in the track mode. Is it when you pick it up? I don't know. But it's a bit basic. I mean, you can smash lots of stuff. We've got a random wrestler who just looks like he's escaped some WWF match in the casino. But yeah, obviously you're still attacking in four directions. But I think a lot of 2D beaters don't let you attack in four directions, do you? So I guess that is a bit different here because you can attack up, down, left, and right. Mm. I don't know if it plays better. It's still a bit just button mashy. Maybe less, maybe less going on. I don't know if I can pick up the fruit machines. I don't appear to be able to, but um, maybe I just don't know the controls. I've got one of the keys to disable the bomb. Now get back to the train. Now the background's pretty cool. That was the strong one, I guess. Uh, was the TG pick for T picks TGP fix for Virtual Fighter only test on Virtual Fighter? I do not know. I know there was some testing done on um, Sega Rally recently to make sure it didn't make that worse. But I don't know uh, anything else about it. If there are new issues, then they should probably be reported. I think the primary, primary goal was to improve uh, Motor Raid and Model 2, which now doesn't fall through the floor. Although it was hoped that it might help Sega Rally too, but it didn't. You can still fall through the floor as much as you want to. Oh, yep, forgot to jump. As much as you want on Sega Rally. <laughs> you like this one, Bob. Um, by bad, you must. You, if by bad you mean the greatest thing ever. Um, th those enemy sprites look so familiar. Just the guys with the red bandana. How many games use similar sprites? So, as far as I know, I can't pick anything up, which is... Oh, I, I guess it's like my, you're wasting too much time, some random hatch, and the train opens up. I feel like I should be... Oh, there we go. I do have to press two buttons. You have to press two buttons to pick things up. Okay. So you can pick things up. You press button one and button three to pick up. So there we go. I can now levitate a barrel and throw it at nobody in particular. But it still kind of works. But there we go, that's how you pick things up. Two buttons at the same time. <laughs> Those are the most useless barrels ever. I don't, still don't know what these things I'm picking up are. You're wearing the exact same flaming camo pants and headband as my main dude. Yeah, I suppose... 
Again, very 90s. Bonus for breaking stuff. So, I'm now on the meat car. Oh, I've, this isn't the attract mode, is it? This is one that's full of pigs. Yeah. And there's a time limit because of bombs and time limits. Can I pick up these? Apparently not. I'm stuck. And yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Can I pick up the? Well, I don't get a chance. But yeah, all the um, all the Atari games of this period with the sprite zooming do have that kind of janky look. I mean, Motor Frenzy, Road Riots, Revenge. Um, not really sure Atari ever really mastered it. Apparently, I can't pick up the. Meat. I can pick up the freezers though. And throw them straight through people. That's good. Only if you're in exactly the right place. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel well programmed. I'll, I'll say that much about this game. I have to be in the exact right place to pick this up, or can I? No, I don't. I don't. I really don't know. And then just can I pick this up now? Or is it a position thing? No, I just can't pick that up. Can I? I don't want to jump on it, although I can jump on it. Serves no purpose. I think I died. Uh, I died. Have another coin. I'm sure you can pick up these pigs somehow, because it does it in the attract sequence. I can't tell you how, and they just get destroyed before I can pick up pygmy and throw it. Also, I can, can't move forward until I've killed these ninja guys, which makes no sense. But the problem is the game's not really mixing it up much, it's just wave after wave of things, walking into the screen, picking some stuff up, killing it. The attract mode makes it look more fun than it is. Unless there's unless I'm missing something like a different weapon change button, I don't know. So I don't even know where I'm shooting right now. I think you no know, the bomb went off didn't it? I failed. Well, if you fail a level, you start the level over. There you go. Can't waste too much time. Just have to keep going. It's it's a bit chaotic. It's hard to judge where bullets are coming from. I mean, I find that even with the belt shooters that are 2D. Uh, I know you can master things like Narc and the Destroyer from Jail, but... I've, I've always found it tricky to judge these things in three dimensions. Not as bad as, say, Zaxxon's isometric view, where I honestly don't have a clue where anything is. But still, I'm trying to shoot these things. I don't know where my bullets are going to go. Let's just jump down here. There for them. Rubbing the freezes at me. I can get through here this time. Let's try and yeah, say I've got a time there. Did I get him? Let's move forward. So these are like the bosses, I guess. Are they? That guy's the boss. This is where somebody tells me this level is impossible. Which wouldn't surprise me. I don't think it is. Oh, continue. He doesn't want to die, does he? Oh, almost there. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Uh, no, there were no shadows. I don't think that's an emulation glitch, Charles. I think it's just the game. Yeah, time over sends you right back to the start. Is that a reserve? Hey, Red Hot Mackay, welcome. I hope you're doing well. So now we're on the loading dock. Um, which, again, it's just going to... See, it clearly flashing a chainsaw there. But it always gives me this weapon. Oh, this is where you can pick up pigs. Okay. So, yeah, let's just pick up some pigs. Well, not pick up pigs, because they're picking up pigs. 
And yeah, they're exploding even though I'm not using any kind of fire weapon. I was rolling across. Come on, I want to pick up a pig. I can't pick up a pig. Now, I don't believe there are any cows to pick up. Oh, there we go. I've got a, I've got a barrel. <laughs> Which actually did some damage for once. Unless there are protection issues and the flashing things on the ground are meant to be different. I mean, it's clear. I, I don't know. I wish I could tell you. I've never played this on original hardware. But the track mode clearly does show chainsaws. Let me pick up this. So there no, I don't think you can ride any vehicles either, so it's just all on foot, because there's no, there doesn't seem to be any interaction with that uh, forklift there. And you guys again, so recycling enemies. And while you've got this mechanic where you can jump on things, it's not really utilised well. Again, I'm sure I picked that up on the chainsaw frame, but I only get this. Unless it depends on the player, maybe player two can use a chainsaw. Uh, yeah, this was actually done quite a few years ago. Um, Phil submitted it to MAME and the ROM was put on a few, was found its way out. And then the board owner said, oh, they don't want it in MAME. That they weren't going to give some other prototypes dumps if they if it was added to MAME. So it was taken out of MAME, but they never did anything else anyway. So eventually it was just decided, oh, we might as well just put it in for the next release because can't sit there and get potentially get lost this is what was going to happen I think a lot of people don't realize they could have played this for about three years but yeah um, it has been out there for about three years and yeah at this point again there's not enough interact you can interact with you can blow stuff up you can jump on you can't even jump on that much See, so I can jump on a barrel, which now that I'm not even jumping on the barrel, I'm just walking past it. I can pick it up. I have a leg sweep move, which is two, di two of the other buttons, but again, it's not that useful. You have to get close to use it. Now I'm in that time, so I'd better just blast my way along here. Now, admittedly, this was a prototype. It's, I'm assuming, not a finished game. All the levels are there. And looked at it, but it could have done with more content. I mean, that wasn't a satisfying, satisfying explosion on a massive tank, considering the size of the thing. Oh, look, this looks nuclear. Oh, it's turned to the robot we saw in the track mode. But yeah, this will be added in the next release. Uh, it missed the current one. Because uh, someone's left the deadline. Freeze point. I don't know. Let's just beat this robot up with lots of kicks. And then, oh, I don't know what I did there. I mean, I am going to try and play this through if I can. And then I'll show you. I'll put the track mode back on where you can see the chainsaw in use because I've not managed to work out how that works in the actual game. Oh, robot down. <laughs> Great value ED 209. Yeah, oh, I've got Professor Guy in there. I'm stuck in the corner now. Congratulations, you disarmed the nuke and saved the cabinet from utter destruction. You were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor and the Soviet Star of Valor. Parades in your honor are held all across the country. Which country? Is that it? Apparently that's it. Apparently that is the game. I thought there was another level. Um, maybe there isn't. There, I guess there wasn't another level. There, there, there you go. That's the game. That is Danger Express. But here you see. Yeah, I think player two gets the chainsaw. Because look at this. Player two has a chainsaw. So the pickups must be character specific. Which is why it flashes between two of them. So if I was playing on the player two side, I'd probably get the chainsaw instead of the um, the sticks, whatever they are. Uh, I can coin in player two side and um, regret every moment of it. 
But we, we can have a look. I've coined up player two side. Shame there aren't more of these snake animations. There was another one before the end of the game, wasn't there? But yeah, um, here we go. So if I choose this character, different camo pants, um, different keys. There we go. Let's pick up a barrel. Let's throw. It's not satisfying either when you throw barrels at people. You'd expect them to roll and knock people out, and just don't. Look, it just pounces off the guy. But yeah, I think some of this can be attributed to it just being a, a prototype and not being fully refined yet. But I can kind of see why, assuming this got to location test, it didn't actually test that well. The trains are only on certain levels, yeah. I mean, you, you get... A, I think it, probably every other level is a train level or so. So train top, box car, train levels, flat car, meat car, train levels. So here we go. So yeah, I get the chainsaw, which I hit people with rather than using as a chainsaw. Can I not just... Uh, okay. I guess it is making a chainsaw sound effect. So. I don't know why the pouts would flash different colours. Okay, let's get an electric chainsaw now. Makes sense, maybe. That's run out. So you have to jump the gap there. So just fall down. There we go. You can fall down if you want. But apparently, on the previous car, and you can fall back. Yeah. So let's just fall off this side. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Can't pick that up, can I? Yeah, it just, if you spend too long, it will always spawn some. I did it again. I forgot to duck. It always spawns some um, guy to throw a projectile at you. I'm sure, if I do it again now, it'll do the same. So, I'm just waiting here for a little bit. Ooh. Or maybe not. Oh, yeah, there we go. Even if it's in an entirely inappropriate place. There we go. I think my favourite run along the train game is still going to be uh, Stop the Express on the Spectrum. Hey, low fi kills. Yeah, it's an Atari prototype from the period where Atari tended to make quite ugly games. Um, but yeah, as I said, it feels a lot like it. Closely related to Pit Fighter and Gardens of the Hood, just with this into the screen perspective. Um. I, 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 maybe they could have taken the idea somewhere, but I think the stages you've got in this would have worked better as part of another game rather than being the entire game. Um, feels a bit limited. For the most part, you're on a flat plane. You can jump on things like these crates, I think. Or can you? I don't. I don't. I thought you could. Yeah, you can just about, but again, the mechanic is really bad. There you go. I'm on top of a crate now. But the crate. Seems so narrow. There we go. Can I climb on this one? I don't know. Can I climb on this one? I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, there's no point that I can tell on st of standing on the crates, and they're incredibly difficult to stand on in the first place. And, yeah, it's. It kind of feels a bit Amiga y shareware, but with better graphics. I don't know. Yeah, good Guardians instead of this. And I think Guardians is probably the better game. And saying Guardians is the better game than any other game is uh, not high praise. I mean, I'm glad it's, you know, going to be emulated now. These, these enemies just seem to move at turbo speed at the end of that level. I mean, the again, it's a prototype. They obviously realised it wasn't good enough. Although they let it get quite far in development before realising it wasn't good enough. Um, I guess that's what happens. Maybe they thought it'd come good eventually. Something would be added to it that would suddenly make it more worth playing. 
but that just never happened. So I've got the purple chainsaw, which is the purple weapon effect. Some kind of sonar chainsaw? I really don't know. But it makes it seems to make very little practical difference. It's just got a range. Is it ranged? Yeah, it's a fireball. But a purple fireball. Yeah, Atari did like wasting money like that. So if you look at how many prototypes they've got, it uh, it's more than most. And a lot of the time the assets didn't even get reused anywhere. I don't know if any of these assets were reused or not, but... I mean, you do find other companies where the, the prototypes would have music in that would then get end, end up in a different game, or even graphics that end up in a different game when they, they, you know, they didn't want to waste what had gone into it. But the way Atari operated in general was quite different to everybody else, I think. I mean, if you look at Atari hardware, there were very few third-party games on the Atari boards, if any. The, the, the Atari made their hardware for their own games, and uh, that was it. You know, nobody else reused the hardware. It's not like, you know, Taito, where there's third-party games on it, um, on their boards. I think Konami was similar. There aren't many third-party games on Konami hardware, at least not outside of the 80s stuff. With with um, Atari, even the, you know, the 80s stuff, it's only really used by their own games. So let's pick up a slot machine then. Jamming got into Championship Sprint. Yeah, I, I mean, I've not played Jamming, but that would make sense, yeah. Um, you got things like a Tecmo's Backfire, where a lot of the resources were the same as Silkworm. The game's very different. Yeah, I mean, this it wouldn't have been cheap to, development, so to, to develop. I mean, their costs were high. At least it's not like Beathead, where they've got a really expensive um, piece of hardware just for one game. But yes, yeah, still, you know, it wouldn't have been cheap. You've got to digitise all the sprites and say that's not even a cheap process, it wouldn't have been in the 90s. And then you're not using them. So these aren't, aren't very well done, that has to be said. Hey Retro and Lim, uh, this is not Guardians of the Hood, this is Danger Express. Although we will look at Guardians of the Hood um, at some point. This is the, uh, this will be in the next version of Main. And um, yeah, it's into the screen more so than side scrolling. And it's not especially great. But just so you only have the two weapon power ups, you know, the chainsaw for this guy with the different types of attack. But again, I mean, the blue, the pink one was just pink fireballs, the blue ones just blue fireballs. They don't make much difference. Hope you're doing well anyway, Retro on them. Um, I'll probably see you on Zypho's Amstream later as well, which is what I'll be doing after the stream, which is why the stream's a bit earlier today, because um, say Zypho's stream will start about nine, and uh, after he's done the intro, it'll be about half nine. And if this one finishes about 10, I'll be catching the majority of his content. Who are these people? Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe some of them will come forward one day. Yeah, but they're probably, probably not got that much interest in gaming now. Most of them, if they ever did, which is probably just people Atari hired or you know got through third parties. But anyway, this is just the player two side. Obviously, you can do simultaneous two player if you wanted. Pick the box or throw the box. But yeah, how long have we been doing? Well, we've been doing about half an hour of Danger Express. I think you get the general idea of it. I'm just going to try and let the credit run out there. Oh well, let, let me run out. The, let me uh, exhaust this credit first, and then we'll see a game over screen and can move on. I think there's some way to roll as well. I guess that's another button combination. Oh, not these things, you guys. I can't stand them. Uh, Exterminator, that's another interesting game. Can't cover it today because it's not Atari, but yeah, Exterminator is another one that did have the into the screen perspective. 
I remember all the hype on the home system for Exterminator ports, and it's actually a really interesting game, Exterminator. Stomping on the floor to kill the bugs and everything. Um, apparently when I want to die, it's much more tricky to die. Um, Okay. Oh, still got another credit. After this, I won't have. So even up, yeah, I still have a ranged weapon, luckily. And I'll get the ammo there. I suppose if you run out of ammo on this, you're not going to get really far up. Because you can't get any closer. That's as far up the screen as I can go. So I can't actually get to where the enemies are, which is another frustrating thing. It forces you to be um, big ranged, long ranged. Yeah, just try and walk off into a random direction at the end of a level. Go on. Um. Yeah, Exterminator's a colourful one on the Amstrad, isn't it? Can't remember Zypho playing it that often. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice colourful game. A bit slow-paced, I seem to remember, but... Oh, look, an orange chainsaw, which... Doesn't have a ranged attack? Okay. So this, this is a fire chainsaw. It, it just makes everybody go up in fire. Burning skeleton. Oh dear. And they don't last long either, most of these weapons. This one seems to have lasted longer than most. Again, collisions are a bit... It's just destroyed. Can I destroy that? Oh well. I'm not going to get to find out. Because I'm not adding any more coins to this. <laughs> the big babe. I did do. I did play through the entire game with the first character. So if you want to see any of the other bosses, then you can go for the catch up and, and just see who the big babe is and all that, and see the Robocop 2 rip off again. Um, Konami. Yeah, Konami used a lot of custom chips, Carlo. That is correct. And scaling, yeah, with digitized sprites, you're losing too much detail, and the detail is not great anyway. End of game. Not even game over. <laughs> My default initials are bad. That is suggestive. Yeah, I don't know why there are no shadows. It would probably make things easier, but... Again, prototype, so lightning and thunder. Not the most original names. Well, I think most of the levels are there. But it definitely lacks ideas. It's very samey after the first um, first. You know, if you played two or three levels, you've basically played it all. But I don't know how far technically it was in development. How much more they were going to do with it, if anything. Sound bug? I don't know. <laughs> the sound levels are quite low for me, so. So the attract mode is really good. I, I like this danger thing with the train going past, but then they really, aside from some some stages being set on a train, and, and maybe inside train cars, it's not really effectively used. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's playable. It's, it's playable, uh, Sakamoto, uh, Nico. But um, it's just a bit dull. I mean, I, there were plenty of games I'd rather play over this. I mean, Philco's Destroyer from Jail, as cheesy as it is, just is more entertaining. There's more. There's more. What 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 was that moments with it? Where it's just sort of grind your way through the levels. You've got your sweep kick that's useless, as far as I can tell. You can jump on things, which is useless. You can pick some things up and throwing them is kind of useless. I mean, it does damage, but it's still a chore and it doesn't do enough damage. And you expect a barrel to roll, not just bounce off somebody. And in the attract mode, the weapons aren't bright pink. The weapon colours reflect what the weapons do. Like, you've got your fire attack, your lightning attack and everything else. There are some that are regular colours. Um... But yeah, it's it's an Atari prototype from '92, and 
in 92 Atari they didn't do the best I mean we can switch to the one they did release and I still think the, uh, the, sh the set name for this one should be Goth not Guardian but that's just my opinion it's the same hardware the Atari G42 board same year but this one did get released so this one's quite loud. Let me turn it down a bit. There we go. Let's try it. That's it. So yeah, this is basically considered the sequel to Pit Fighter, and it's like the bad part of town. And again, it was it's making my default initials on the other game bad, because I guess bad was a good thing in the 90s. Sorry about that, yeah, it's, um, I forgot the previous game is quite quiet, and um, this one's a bit louder. I uh, don't know why the previous game's so quiet compared to this one. <laughs> the Destroyer from Jail is true art. Yeah, and the, the voices that were recently added um, improved the Destroyer from Jail too. If that is the game Philco went out on, they went out on a good one. Obviously here, the presentation is similar to Pit Fight. You've got your, your gym scenes in the attract mode. Um... But yeah, Guardians of the Hood. Four characters. Shall we pick Chief? At least taking over this crummy town. Yeah, I think this was quite heavily influenced by the Warriors. I think I remember reading that. They don't show off, just, just beat them up, please. So, you've got your five buttons, is it? Yeah, five, bu five buttons. Let's, let's redefine them for ease of me playing this. Let's, uh, let's punch a uh, post. Let's have a homeless person thrown at me. But this is obviously a more traditional game in terms of it's just side scrolling. And as mentioned in the chat, um, yeah, Warriors come out to play. It's, it's very Warriors. I played enough of the Warriors PS2 game when I was working on uh, getting that on the PS4. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And, but, uh, this is clearly not actually licensed, but the same ideas. Heavily influenced by. And the guy's a bit hagger like, isn't he? Also, yeah, if you punch, uh, you're going to get hit by a handbag for, for a stray kick there. <laughs> Throwing homeless as a weapon. Yes. Um, it's a bit like throwing the, uh, the gnomes in D&D, isn't it? Not that I would ever say throwing names is a good idea in DD. Oh, look, the fire hydrant is, uh, has been pulled out of the ground, and you've got some badly animated water. And yeah. Oh, look. Oh, look. I've got to insert another coin. Yeah, I don't know. And now I'm. It tries to stop you punching the, uh, the background characters. And that's the other annoying thing. You can't always face the way you want. The direction. Sometimes you change direction, other times you won't. Um, it's a bit of a pain to play. Come on.
But you know, considering Sega had games at home like the Streets of Rage servers, I'm not sure why you'd want to play this in an arcade in 92. Oh look, zoom. Now we can get, work out the gym. Just becomes a one on one thing for a bonus. I can't remember if this is player versus player if you've got two players, it might be. I don't believe you're allowed to breathe fire on people at most gyms. I, I would say that's cheating. I lost. Yeah, I think it is player versus player. As you say, gaming how YouTube think. I just don't think I could ever find anybody who'd want to play this game at the same time as me. This is more pit fightery, you know, arena one on one battle. Although it somehow controls worse than pit fighter. And that is impressive. I don't think 92 is Atari's finest year, if we're going to be honest here. I mean, you know, you could say that in some ways um, Danger Express feels less laggy in the controls, but also it's got less buttons. It could have probably benefited from having the five buttons this does. Or maybe, maybe there's an option to use five buttons on it, who knows. Um, but it's still the same ugly scale of sprites. There's the sprites are definitely cleaner on this, I'll give it that. I'll give this one that. I don't know if Danger Express would have been cleaned up had it been released, but they're less grainy on this, and it's the same hardware, so there's not much excuse for how bad some of the sprites in Danger Express look. Yeah, dark times for Atari, dank times for Atari. Yeah, I'm pretty sure breathing fire at gyms is considered hazardous, hazardous red hot Mackay. Um, repeat practice or continue? We'll continue. I'm never going to defeat the dreads. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure plenty of places did have this game because people were asking about it long before it was emulated. Some people have fond memories of it, just like they have for Pit Fighter. I think I have more fond memories of Pit Fighter because Pit Fighter actually got home ports. So, you know, I played quite a lot of Pit Fighter on the Mega Drive and didn't hate it. Uh, whereas this, though, I don't think it ported or anything, did it? This got left in the arcades. So I guess that made people more interested in it if they hadn't played it or thought it was going to be more like Pit Fighter. I don't know. It's not one I ever remember seeing in an arcade. I don't know what pick, it, pick up weapon is, but um, it's bound to be a button or a button combination. I'm not even sure I care at this point. <laughs> but like most Atari games, this one is ridiculously heavily protected as well. I, I mean, there we go. I've picked it now. I don't need it. So for a long time this wasn't even emulated properly. Atari spent, you know, a fortune on protecting their gamers, even this. I don't know why. I don't I don't think that many companies would have been queuing up to boot like this thing. <laughs> yeah, Pit Fighter on the snares is bad. Pit Fighter on the CPC, I'm sorry, CPC is an interesting one, because they've tried to reproduce all the arcades and um, sprite scaling and everything else, so it just runs terribly, but despite, you know, it's in like two colours, maybe four colours, but somehow looks closer to the arcade than any of the mainstream ports, despite that, but it's just not playable. It's a mess, but I, I don't know why they went for that approach. But it's interesting to see how some of the ports did turn out back in the day. But um, ports are for another stream. This is the you know, this is arcade stream. I'm, I'm doing arcade games today. I'll look at ports of games another time. Or Atari Originals, Tengen Originals. And the system tap buttons. All the ones. Just 
going to kick him in the face. That's too much to ask. Uh, this is, I think, is it the Sloop Protection? I can't remember the names. But all sorts of elements of the game are protected. I mean, um, I think there's a write up on it somewhere. I think Mavin might have covered it at some point. But, you know, there's even extra protection. If you look in the source file, the game jumps in places to a map memory, which apparently is just meant to return to where it came from. And that's on top of a complex protection chip that is controlling various game elements, messing up the code flow, messing up the you know the logic if it's all wrong. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, pit fight will start glitching out if you get the protection wrong, or, or gauntlet will start giving you impossible levels if you get the protection wrong, rampart will start giving you mismatched backgrounds and everything if the protection is wrong. Atari protected things as much as they could. Um, you know, when the slapstick was improved for some games in main recently, we also discovered other ones broke and also we discovered that the Empire Strikes Back had been broken in Maine for a long time and that was just resetting at certain points randomly which you might not think is protection until you realize it is protection. Atari just like subtle sneaky protections, ones that kick in after a while of gameplay, ones that just break the game in non-obvious ways. And when a game's so bad in the first place it's kind of hard to tell if it's broken in a non-obvious way or just a bad game is the case here. I don't remember if she's white in the intro. Um, I wasn't paying much attention. You might have to look at the intro. Oh, intro. Oh dear, I've started a two-player game by mistake. That's always a mistake. Well, I've done something anyway. I'm not sure what I've done. What have I done? Oh, yeah, we have a super lag in. And the frame rate's not even good on this. It say it feels laggy, it feels unresponsive. It's just not good. Yeah, there's some nice visual effects, like you say, the shadows in the background there fighting over the screen. That's not a bad effect, but it doesn't make up for the game being just <sighs> nasty. No, oh, I'm tapping the buttons here. Oh. There are just so many better beat-em-ups. You know, you line up a load of beat em ups, even ones from earlier than 92. And I don't think many people are going to pick this one as a first choice. No, that's the second player. Well, I'm trying to beat a player two. Say the sprite scaling is kind of nice, but it doesn't really add anything to the game. You know, even when Sega went for sprite, sprite scaling on an Arabian fight, I don't really think it helped the gameplay. Yeah, it gives the illusion that the characters are further back, but did anybody really complain about that before? What film is that? Um, I think you'd have to ask Mrs. Zai later on, later on stream. She might know. It absolutely did not help the game playing in fact. No, it felt like a novelty in Arabian Fight too, especially with the characters just splatting against the front of the screen and jumping out from the front. And yeah, okay, you know, it showed off you could do fancy effects, but they've got to work for the game. And that's, I think that's why something like Streets of Rage 2 on the Mega Drive, which doesn't have any of that going on, because the hardware can't scale sprites, just ends up being a far better game that could concentrate on the game. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of that game in general because I, I find the premise a bit, a bit dull, but you can't complain or deny that the execution of it is practically perfect. Whereas the execution of something like this is... Yeah, it's, it's not good. How, this, this roll effect, I mean, it's like three or four frames of animation. It's horrible. <laughs> I 
I've not played that much of Raven Fight lately. It's probably one I should play on stream at some point. Should do some Sega stream, shouldn't I? Um, Now, I'm obviously not playing as well, I'm just button mashing my way through it, but honestly, it's just not a great game. Uh, I mean, the game here is not updating at 60 frames a second, no, it feels more like 15 to be honest. just tedious. I'm going to beat this guy. No, there is flashing red, though, but I don't know how you do all these moves, too. There are special moves, as you just saw. I don't know how you execute them, but apparently you can execute them. Gang defeated. There we go. Now, I don't know if you'd say this is worse than uh, Double Dragon 3. Um... I'd probably rather play this in Double Dragon 3. That's, um... Yeah, the game just dragged on. Look, you can choose the character you just defeated. I can, I can now pick JJ. Which, I guess, isn't the worst feature. One, two, three, Although I failed to... I don't know, I've got to pick JJ and maybe I didn't. Collision looks really bad too. Oh, I did pick JJ, he's just wearing blue. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the Japanese Double Dragon 3 takes that away, but Double Dragon 3 still feels somehow worse to play even without that mechanic. That mechanic just makes it utterly unforgivable in the non-Japanese version. I suppose if Leland had made this, then I can imagine Leland doing something like this, but with um, buying. I mean, Atari had some buying stuff, really. If you look at Gauntlet, really... Round two goes to Kai. One, two, three, but, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, and I'd rather play Pit Fighter over Violence Fights, but we are talking like bottom tier, beat him up, arena or side scrolling or anything else, really. There we go. Round two goes to Blue. I'll continue on the street to recruit new guardians. Go on then. Your shavers. Hmm. Oh look. Now the quality of the digitized graphics seems to be getting worse as well. There's a train running badly. I can stash my trash. Oh look, there's somebody there flashing. There are some hilarious bits. Look, there you go. We've got a flasher. But a flasher, just, you know, flashing at passing trains. Okay, now I can't beat up anymore. Michael Jackson. Oh, look, there's an advert from the Atari game. Road right, four wheel drive. Anyway. I think we've seen enough Guardians of the Hood. It's one hour into the stream, and we have played two Atari prototypes from 1992. Yeah, there's a lot of really bad graphics in those games, Mr. Midas 2K. <laughs> and uh, yes, maybe it turned into a porno there. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, did the third hard driving get properly emulated yet? The flying one. 
Um, I've tried playing Hard Drive and Airborne a few times in main Retro on Limb. Um, the problem is trying to map any reasonable controls to it. I do think it flashes up some errors from time to time, but it's it's one I've not really managed to get to grips with, so I can't answer that definitively. Right, for the next game, I'm going to be swapping over to an unofficial build of MAME. Um, because, yeah. This requires quite a lot of hacks to run, which basically break the PlayStation emulation and things using hard drives in the rest of MAME. So this is Primal Rage 2. Is Aka R going to get played? It may do, Aussie guy. It may do. But yeah, um, some years ago, somebody did come up with a bunch of hacks to get Primal Rage 2 running in main. However, the hacks, as I say, they, they're kind of very game-specific and uh, don't do much good to the rest of the PlayStation emulation and aren't of a quality that was ever acceptable to incorporate into MAME itself. So, if you want to run Primal Rage 2, you do still have to use an unofficial build of MAME. Which is what I'm doing here. But, you know, it's entirely prototype. So, yeah, of the 3D PlayStation era, so we might as well have a look at it. It is from... 1996. Uh, there was a bit of controversy over it, but um, I think that has mostly passed lo-fi kills. I mean, the game is now available, licensed on some some official Atari product, I think. I think Atari themselves wanted to get their hands on it. Ooh, transformed it us. So yeah, unlike the original Final Rage, this one you transform between sort of human form and beast form. It's... I'm not sure why this one went unreleased. But it did. I believe Galloping Ghosts in the US have a working copy of this. Though with the uh, hard drive and replace with an SSD. Not sure if the game's are 100% complete, but a lot of the content is there. And again, if we're talking about games where a huge amount of effort was put in, and then nothing came to them, this will be one of them. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Primal Rage's novelty was the dinosaurs, so this just makes it a more generic fighting game. Although Primal Rage was not great. <laughs> Primal Rage, the original, the original Primal Rage emulation is still really bad in main too. If you know how to play the game next like special moves, you're pretty much guaranteed to have to break it. I've been stunned. I guess that was an instant kill or something? I don't know. has almost the same name as me. Yes, that may be why I chose Kaze. Because... Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem very good. Or I'm just not very good at this game. So let's pick... Shank. Shank versus the sound glitches. Okay. Oh, look, I have a ranged attack. Yeah, this is actually quite well animated. I think it's making quite good use of the PlayStation hardware for the transparency effects and the, all that light. That's similar. You can kind of tell it's a fighting game on 3D hardware, even though it's mostly 2D. The layering kind of gives it away. Mm. 
I unfortunately don't know how to do it. There are fatality type moves, but I don't know them. I think uh, the people in the background are meant to be... Uh, I think you're meant to be giants, yeah. I think you're still meant to be giant monsters, even though you're not dinosaurs, and the people in the background are regular size. Or it's like that episode of Future Armor where Bender starts his own build. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's background stories and information for a lot of Atari games like that. I think they did like to share their stories. Saying I don't know the moves. Well, that looks inappropriate. Now, I think this game would have done fine if it had been released. I don't think anybody would be saying it's a classic. But let's let's face it. I've played. I've actually played far worse fighting games than this one. Yeah, people people do want their stories told. I guess you get it more with companies like Atari because they're a US based company. Whereas in Japan you probably get the stories from the Japanese developers, but we don't get as many of them translated over here. Whereas the Atari ones are naturally gonna be English language for English magazines and Yeah, Beavis and Butthead was modified 3D you that as again. Not currently emulated. Main, main for some reason does manage to do the Konami M2 3DO things, but not the original 3DO. But I guess they're not as similar as you might think or something. Oh, we've got a little bit of a, a bit of a dinosaur translation there for you. Maybe just shouldn't have been branded as a primal rage game. Maybe people are just expecting more dinosaur fighting and not so much, you know, primitive tribal. Oh dear, I'm gonna lose here again. Yeah. It would have had to compete with those games. But if we're talking uh I mean, there were worse games on the Neo Geo. I think there's something like uh, Ragnarok, for example, is far worse digitized graphics than this, and that was released on the Neo. Um, this is a bit late. From, this is '96, so it was a little bit late. But I think the art holds up. I think the style holds up. I don't know if the gameplay would hold up. But outside of the professional circles, a lot of the time people are just going to button mash their way through these anyway. Yeah, I don't know if it finishes. Might wish more than I did dinosaur. Indeed. I think the fatality is called extinctions, aren't they? Yeah, I, I mean... I'm sure there are people who could demonstrate this game better than I can. can. It would be nice to see this uh, somehow integrated into a proper version of main. Also, it says I'm playing nothing in the bottom because I am currently using uh, HB, HB main, not um, regular main, so I'm having to be in a different folder for this one. Um, just for the ogre who may be watching at some point in order to you know, do the um, timestamps. Savage uses attackers with your blessing. I, I can uh, give you a uh, roar as a blessing, flack you. I can go Rawr! like a dinosaur. There you go. That that is your your dinosaur savage blessing. And uh, apparently it's game over. 
So version 0.36a apparently. So version number's quite low on this. Yeah, the sounds there don't work. I don't know if that is an emulation thing. Probably is. Because I think that's the place the game usually hangs without the hacks. So it might actually be related to why it hangs, because I think when it would hang on hardware, I mean hang on regular main instead it plays a nasty noise here. So that kind of suggests to me that maybe there's still a broken DNA that the hacks are bypassing or something similar. But it's quite interesting. Oh, I made time. Okay, I, 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 apparently I, I can make the characters time. This is a little bit off the grid, this one is. I'm also going to have to go off the grid if I want to show something else in a bit, because um, what I want to show is broken in the original name, although it's a bit of a novelty. No finishing moves or extinctions from me. Fun for the apes background, I hadn't noticed, but yeah, it's very likely. So it would be nice to see this proper, in a proper version of Main, but the way it was coded, the hacks that were applied to make it work really. You know, they're, they're really bad, and the person who did them doesn't seem to have ever gone back to try and find a way to do them cleaner so that it can be properly integrated. So, unless somebody studies it properly, it's probably going to be stuck in unofficial builds for the foreseeable future, unfortunately. I don't know. The, I mean, the hack should at least tell you the, the code paths that it needs to take to not crash. But if it's just bypassing what should be in the proper operation, a DNA operation, something sound related, um, it might be the hacks are just working around the problem in a too brutal way. But you can't really control the dinosaurs after the transformation. It's just a, like it's just like a special move. If you could control them after transforming, that'd be a bit better. It's just literally, this is, you know, the, the move. Let me continue. Let's see who I can pick next. Versus. Anyway. I mean, this wasn't en intended to be an entirely Atari prototype, right? so we might look at some release Atari games too at this time. But I did want to look at some prototypes, so, you know. This is only the third game of the night, despite being an hour in this time, and that's unusual, because usually I spend about 15 minutes on a game, not half an hour. The Coaster plays the dinosaur and transforms into the human temporality instead. Um, do you know what those codes are? Gaming hell YouTube thing? Yeah, Atari did sort of go severely downhill once we hit the 90s. I mean, it's just, I, I don't know why. Hey Christian, uh, welcome. And also, yeah, welcome to everybody else who's joined. I may have missed a few in the chat, but uh, you are always welcome here. And it's good to see any new names dropping by and any any uh, regulars dropping by too you know I, I do like the community we have here and a lot of the names that are in chat are ones I recognize from many previous streams which is all good on the character select screen hold up for approximately four seconds okay well I think I may have just uh, missed my chat okay oh yeah there we go yeah I see so yeah, holding it up does you give you the dinosaur to actually play as them. Okay, that's uh, that's a nice little secret. So yeah, I wouldn't have been aware of that if you hadn't mentioned it. So uh, thank you, the Gaming Hell YouTube thing, for mentioning that. So you can play as the dinosaurs, although it doesn't make the opposition a dinosaur too. Unless there's a cheat to make everybody dinosaurs. But now it's more like Primal Rage. 
Yeah, Atari's older games were much more original, yes. I mean, you've got things like Paperboy that's a completely original concept. Uh, 720 APB, they're trying to do things that nobody else was doing, you know, simulations of real life activities, but a bit different. Marble Madness, again, nothing else like it. I'm, I've said before, I'm surprised that there weren't more clones of things like Marble Madness. I'm surprised there isn't a Japanese take on it from anybody, but nobody did. Um, obviously, the 70s stuff was pretty much what you'd expect from the era. Um, you know, a lot of black and white games, simple games, two player only games. This is Primal Rage 2, yes, Christian. I'm using HB main to run it, which is why it says nothing in the corner rather than having my script to show the name. But we'll give this another five minutes or so and uh, probably move on to a different prototype. useful move in the world. Because um, Aaron, who did a, has done a lot of the uh, Atari work in Maine, did suggest one that he feels doesn't really get much coverage. And so we'll be looking at that one after this. This one got a fair bit of coverage when the hacks went in to uh, Rage for... Is it Maine for Rage at the time? And now into Rage for HB Maine. But probably still gets overlooked because a lot of people aren't going to be looking at unofficial versions of Maine. Oh well. The Dinosaur died. Uh, Tubin may be later uh, main favourites playlist. Uh, I have played Tubin on stream before, I'm not very good at it. But, uh, there we go. So yeah, you can play as dinosaurs in Pl Primal Rage 2 if you hold up on the select screen for four seconds. So yeah. But I think we'll probably move on from Primal Rage 2 now. Nice FMV intro, isn't it? Yes, maybe one day somebody will come up with a proper way to get this running in main without it requiring a hacked up build. What's this one? It's not one I've spent much time with either, I'll be honest. You can see the game's not quite finished. The um, One of the missions there still says coming soon. So they've no, it's still mid-development prototype. Uh, there seems to be lots of shooting going on and quotas to meet. Are you talking about the uh, the 3D Gauntlet games, Jasper, or the originals? And then we'll coin it up. We'll coin it up. And press start. Have you got the gut? Have I got the guts. Uh, I can choose different levels. Obviously, I can't choose the one that's not complete yet. So we'll go with anti-aircraft, which is the one you just saw in the tract. Shoot down the quota of the planes before the time expires. Smart missile, anti-aircraft shot. So smart missiles are hoping so. Namco mini game challenge shoot, I think, a little while back. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I think it became a T. Um, and that's kind of as a similar concept, you know, little shooting games and things like that, those mini games. And that's the impression I get from this one. Little challenges. And this one is a shooting game. I just got blown up, which wasted my time. I'm not going to make this, am I? No, I didn't make it. Failure. Did not make quota. Lose one life. Uh, and apparently, I can't redo. I can't redo that stage. But um, let's do submarine torpedo quota of ships. So yeah, again, you know, we're doing similar. Oh dear, I got here, which is an instant game over. 
There's no Atari bomber when you set the credit, that's going well. Here, instead of you know, planes in the air, I've got to blow up the submarines. Only 24 this time, but you know, my shots are much slower. Blow up the ships with the submarines, not blow up the submarines. I've got anti aircraft guns too. Hard to hear me over the game. Okay, um, okay, Bob, just a second. I'll turn this one down a bit then. Hopefully this will be better. Let me know if that's better. I guess it's a lot of the bassy sounds or something. I am frozen too. <laughs> oh dear, this is this is um, this is going well, isn't it? Um, why am I frozen? Why am I frozen? Oh, hold on. This happened before. Do a video capture device. That's what isn't. Deactivate. Activate. Now I'm brighter because it always activates in super bright mode. But um, yes, I am no longer frozen. There you go. I'm no longer on ice. That would be nice. Oh dear, that was a bit harsh. So yeah, while on the first level, you know, the anti-aircraft one, you only really failed when the time ran out. And this one, you can fail really easily just by getting hit. So I would say the game balance between the different games is a little off. I'm going to fail it anyway, just because I'm going to run out of time. And um, not meet the quota, because... Apparently this game is harder than I thought it was. The trench warfare stage is notable here for having the quickest get potential game over in arcade history. Says the uh, gaming hell YouTube thing. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing with this um, this game in general. Some stages you can play for a while, other ones you can just get blown up really quickly. Here we go. So. Now we've got a depth charge type game. So again, it's just a mini shooting game. We could easily theme this as Santa dropping presents, explosive presents on children. But that might not sell too well, so they probably could do that for the time. Yeah, there are other games like that. I can't remember them, but there are some games where I've inserted a credit and it's been game over. You didn't move. A lot of the early maze games are like that. Actually. If you don't know what you're doing, you get a very quick game over. You know, as much as I like something like uh, Peter Pepper's Ice Cream Factory, if you don't have to play it, then you're, you're going to die before you've had a chance to work it out. And, um, hey Andrea, welcome, hope you're doing well. Another one of our regulars in many of these streams. A uh, Japanese PS2 came in the mail today, did it, Cal? Oh, look, I failed again. Uh, are there any final lap games on the PS2, or did you buy it for other reasons? So, yeah, now we have a shoot em up stage. With momentum, because everybody wants planes with momentum. Yeah. This is not nice. <laughs> Honestly, it wants to be Xevious or something. But it's... It requires you to be far too accurate with your bombs. And saying so momentum is not something you want in the controls of a shoot em up. And th this has it. Your, your plane just feels slipping. Oh yeah, and you can die by getting hit as well, of course. The game's clearly not balanced yet either, because everything is really unforgiving. But yeah, an Atari mini game collection, really. 
Again, this is 89, so we can't even blame this on being a 90s Atari. This is a prototype that came before that period. Now I'm going to fail again because... Yeah, okay, and now we have the machine gun one. And I believe this is the one that was mentioned as the trench warfare one, where you can uh, gain over very quickly. So it's like Space Invaders, but if they came straight towards you. And there you go. They stab you, and that's game over. I think it was planned as a, a, a mini-game collection. I think that was the idea. There were lots of these different... There we go. Another credit gone. Another game over. So this, this level is really badly balanced, because as soon as, as one of the game over... Shinobi's the bonus stage, except it's not a bonus stage, and as soon as one of those appears, you get another game over. And they don't reset between credits. So, yeah. This is where you spend a fortune, because this, this level was clearly not finished or considered. Yeah, here, here we go. Yeah, this is not a great game, is it? Oh yeah, and I got stabbed again. And if they get down there, there's nothing you can do about it. No, I'm going to get stabbed again because somebody got down here. Or maybe not, I don't know. It seems quite random. Oh dear. And, yeah, there he is. Yeah, this is this is probably uh, you know your mortgage down the pan if you keep playing this level for too long. No oh, luck. There we go again. Another game over. It, it, you can tell that by the, the point they got to the, developing this level, they'd given up because nobody was serious going to play that. And failure anyway because I ran out of time. I didn't meet the quota on any of those. And then, you know, it's just back to the start. Maybe if you complete the levels, something happens afterwards, and I failed every single one. So I don't know. But yeah, it's... Um, it's a collection of not great ideas, and none of them are especially well implemented. And yeah, I can kind of see why it didn't get released. Even on this one, there's momentum, you're slippy. Which again, you don't want a shooter. As I say, it doesn't have the Atari Gong. I can insert credits and there's no Atari Gong. I don't know why there's no Atari Gong. That, that, that is most confusing. Again, I'm glad these are emulated. You know, and Aaron was right to point this one out as one that doesn't get much coverage. It isn't on System16.com and the Atari list, from what I know. Unless it's on the unknown hardware section. Because System16 hasn't been properly updated in a while. But, um... Yeah, it's not great, is it? Again, it's like a lot of the bad Atari games. It's just got that sort of Amiga PD feel to it. You can imagine these this being a compilation of PD games on the Amiga, public domain games. And uh, that last one, people going, was this actually released? No Atari gone, naught out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 uh, that would be on the on the Amiga, maybe. Right. So, um, let's do something a bit different. Uh, this is also going to have have no display in the bottom corner. Um, I just wanted to do some trivia. Um, so. Me now. Uh, is this. I mean, I covered this back in 2015. Yeah, okay, I covered this back in 2015, but if we go with um, test screen recording. So, when Midway, Atari Midway, as they were at the time, distributed some of the later Gauntlet games and other things on the 3D hardware, 
they'd uh, need to up- send update kits to the arcade operators, and one of those was for uh, Gauntlet Legends. And if you had a 1.2 Gauntlet Legend and needed to update it to 1.6, you'd get a kit like this in a box with uh, you know your four upgrade ROMs. One's a BIOS ROM and three in three that you have to put into a socket to upgrade. This is what the system looked like. Your hard drive, your boards. And yeah, I detailed the procedure here. So we'll just have a quick look at that procedure now in an older version of main, because this procedure is apparently, well, it seems to be broken in a new version of main, which is kind of annoying, but um, we'll, um, we'll have a look at that in an older version. So first of all, I'm gonna fire up Gauntlet Legends version 1.2 in main 0.165 because you know they've got old main so you can see down there in the bottom left corner it says version 1.2 because this is version 1.2 or i think it might be version 1.3 but it still says 1.2 in the corner there are four players registered on this machine which means four players have entered their initials and yeah it's 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 gauntlet legends You know, I'm not going to play especially extensively here. I'm, just, I'm doing this to show the upgrade procedure. And again, this will show nothing in the corner because I'm using the older version of MAME. Uh, hey, the ogre. Um, it's good to see you. And thank you, as always, for doing the, you know, the timestamps and everything. I think if you switch YouTube to the higher setting, it will be fine. It probably just defaulted to 144p because it dropped out. Anyway, if we bring up the... Uh, bio selection menu so it says driver no update rom if i change that to update step one of three and then we hit reset the game should boot into rom update mode so this is what would happen if you install that update rom chip on the board the first chip it would update the run in rom update mode which will uh, wait this isn't displaying in the menu now because why would it this is ever displaying in the menu. Yeah, okay, so for some reason it didn't capture it. So you install the chip and it'll boot in ROM update mode. The NVIDIA chat's frozen too. <laughs> Everything's freezing today, isn't it? Everything is freezing today. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, What are we doing here? Twitch chat or YouTube chat as it is this time. Okay. Okay. There we go. It seems to be updating now. <laughs> so yeah, if you install that update chip, you get this. It will check the hard drive. Let's speed up it. Speed through it. So it's looking for it's looking for free space on the hard drive. So this is a you, you you get the you know the four ROM chips. You install the update the updated BIOS ROM, and then in the empty socket on the board, you put uh, one of these three ROM update chips. And the first step would do this. It would um, go through this, which will take a while. But I find these things interesting because back in the day, you know, as a player of the game, you're not going to have seen any of these update procedures. This is what the arcade operators would have been doing. You know, when the arcade was closed, they'd be upgrading the games to get this kit from Midway, Atari, Atari Midway, you know, at the time. Uh, Midway bought up Atari, haven't they? So. But this, this part takes a while because it just wants to make sure there's no bad parts on the disc, which is kind of sensible if you're going to update the game. Now, in MAME, you can just completely ignore this because there's a, the parent set is 1.6 anyway. I'm running this on the clone 1.2 set, as I mentioned, just to show that to show what the update procedure was. For some of the Atari Midway games, which is Hydro Thunder, you got the updates on a floppy disk. Um, they're more the PC-based systems. So I guess it kind of made sense, if they're DOS-based PCs or something anyway, to just ship an update that's a, you know, a bootable disk. But for these custom ones, you'd um, you'd install these custom ROM chips, and you'd run this update procedure. Now, 
The sad thing is with a lot of these, if you read the instructions that came with the updates, it's quite quite clear that Mame is missing a ton of old versions of these games. I mean, the, the update the update instructions say if you're running an older version than 1.2, you have to get a 1.2 hard drive from Atari first. Mame doesn't even have anything older than 1.2, and every single drive you find on eBay or anything else is just an old a new drive with the main CHD images flashed onto it. You can't really find an original old drive from the game that still works that might have an older revision on anymore. They just don't seem to be out there. And for some games like Hyperdrive, I think it is, we've got update chips for a revision that we don't have. We've only got the newer revision, so we can't use the update chips at all because the older revision was never dumped at all and probably doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, um, so the, the first part of the procedure is sort of completed. It's checked the disk. Now it's like, you know, it's going to actually apply the update. So we press um, we press start, and then it tells you the ROM's loaded. It tells you to power it off, and then it tells you to swap the ROM chip for ROM chip two, the second one in the update pack. So if we do that, which you can do in the bio selection menu, which seems to not work very well in main, this version of main, because I'm sure if I select reset, we're going to get no image again. In fact, what is it doing? Yeah, that for some reason in the old version of main that cuts out the image. But if I'm going to relaunch it and pretend we did that, then with chip 2 in, update version 1.6 ROM, you know, ROM 2 or 3, it's installed that update, now it's telling me to power it off again. Insert chip 3, same thing, it's loaded that. Remove the ROM from the socket. So again, we could do that in here, or we can just um, quit main without putting the ROM in. And it's going to tell me it's working on installing the update. It's, it's rewriting hard drive data. Tell me to press start or whatever. Update complete power of game. Restart the game, and this is still running the 1.2 set in main. And you'll quickly see it's now version 1.6. You can see it in the corner. It's still got your four registered players from before. So I just updated the 1.2 set in MAME using the official you know, Atari Midway update kit to version 1.6. And that is what the operators would have done back in the day. And, you know, I think the fact you can do things like that in MAME and things like that documented is kind of important. It's, it's, it's a side of the arcades that, as players, you want to see. And when those update chips and things do show up, if MAME can find a way to make them usable, it's something a bit a bit extra about the project, you know, beyond just playing the games. Um, we will look at Gauntlet Legends 1.6, but we will be doing it in a current version of MAME instead. Because that way I get my shaders and everything else. So let's just launch the actual proper 1.6 set in a newer version of MAME and have a look at it. But um, yeah, I, I thought... There might be some interest in just having a look at, you know, the, that update procedure. Now, if we launch the 1.6, uh, there we go, 1.6, the proper 1.6 set in a modern version of MAME. Now, this is one of the various games in MAME that has benefited from Aaron's recent uh, Voodoo improvements. It's a bit faster now, runs a bit better. So, yeah, by entering your initials, you do create an account on the machine, I believe. So if you enter the same initials as before, yeah, you've got your initials and password. So if I, if you know, if another player enters HZE888, they will continue with my character, basically. So, yeah, right, let me just pause a second. I'm going to refresh the chat here. Yeah. I'm going to say move, just to make sure everything's working. Everything's working. Okay, cool. So you choose where you want to start. Let's start on easy. So obviously this is one of the update, one of two 3D gauntlet games that were released. In uh, This one's from 1998. And, you know, I think players did quite like this one. I know the, there was an N64 port, wasn't there? And, um... I mean, I, I don't know what I think of it. To me, it's it, it does lose 
some of what made Gauntlet Gauntlet. You can't really see enough and you seem to have more linear paths through the levels, but you've still got like your basic mechanics. You've got your enemy generators that you can destroy. And you've got multiple characters. And again, it's best played with a friend. So it does it does keep those those elements. But um, I've never been a huge fan of this. I'd be lying if I said I was. Uh, even the original Gauntlet I find to be quite a frustrating game, a bit of a, a credit muncher, but a lot of people really like it, so I'm not gonna say it's a bad game. Again, it was it was Atari doing something that nobody had done before, trying to create a sort of D and D type experience in the arcades with a, t a lot of team elements to the gameplay as well. You know, you really want one one of each type of character playing and working together and it was a game that people spent a lot of money on, but enjoyed spending a lot of money on. Even if you were buying health all the time, your health is always decreasing. Just as it is here, you're always losing health. If you stand still, you're going to lose health. So it's basically a timer. And to me, not a great mechanic, but... Or three friends. Did I say four friends? Um, if I said four friends, you know, you, you, you've... Um, maybe got somebody, somebody encouraging you. I think the simplicity of the original Gauntlet is lost here. The maze designs and everything. Whereas this just feels like kind of fairly small 3D spaces. Not so mazy. And again, this is one where they really want you to spend a lot of money on it, hence the password system, the character and the experience. Um, I mean, IGS would do this with cards on things like the, the PGM2 games where you'd store your character on a card. But before that was a system, you had ones like this where it would actually store your character profiles on the hard drive of the machine and your progress. Now, I, I do wonder what some of the uh, ones that are stored on the hard drive images main users are. I don't, I don't think anybody's ever tried to find what initials are stored because I think it does say at the start four character profiles are on there that haven't been deleted. But um, I don't know what they are. Okay, there we go. Special attack, clear the screen, but I'm dead. So, yeah, I can choose my warrior again. I said a friend, or three friends, yes. Yes, uh, indeed. Three friends is better than one. Four friends means you've got somebody to laugh at you when you die. A whole chat through room full of people. Even better, you know, you can all tell me I'm playing the game wrong. And the, the graphics are kind of what you'd expect for 3D of the era. None of the characters are too detailed because that would be a problem due to the number of enemies you need. But again, that's probably one reason I don't like this as much as the original Gauntlet. You are limited by the number of enemies. I mean, the original Gauntlet, you could have a maze full of enemies because... They were just, I think they, I think actually a lot of the enemies were represented as part of the tile map, so they didn't even have to have many sprites. Whereas here, obviously, every enemy is a 3D model, and the voodoo f fill rate is not infinite. You've got obviously classic speech needs food badly and the like. It knows what it's a sequel to. Gauntlet Legends does not have a slapstick, no cow. I don't think it has any cows either, cow. And there's no final laps, so I think they should have put slapstick in as a weapon, just as sort of an in joke. Are there any Atari games with the slapstick as a weapon? So I can buy different things. I spend all my money on reflect shot because that seems like a wise thing to do. Maybe Primal Rage 2 had some slapsticks as weapons. Yeah, it does lack the charm and it's early 3D and early 3D tends not to age too well. It lacks the excess. I mean, Gauntlet had a lot of excess. Like I say, the sheer number of enemies was something that was impressive about Gauntlet. 
I, I find the teleports in, in Gauntlet infuriating. I find the fact it's it's just a big credit muncher really annoying. But it stood out, and you know I played Gauntlet a lot on the home systems and on the Spectrum. I played a ton of it there. Use magic to kill death. Okay, there we go. Um, but I think the hardware wasn't quite ready for this. Maybe that you know the hardware wasn't there. You can't do the hundreds of thousands of characters you might need. So you just end up with a bit of a a bit of a 3D beat em up with magic and four players. So that's what it feels like. This feels more like a beat em up than a gauntlet game. Hey Thomas, welcome. I hope you're doing well. And uh, sorry if this stream caught you off guard a bit by being a bit, bit earlier than usual because uh, admittedly it, it was a bit earlier than usual but as I said that's because I'm, I you know I like to if I'm doing weekend streams Friday Saturday nights I do like to do them a bit earlier because it means I can I can watch other people stream later you know I, I say I think I'll be watching either Zypho later or maybe a bit of Nicky and Bunty maybe both I think Nicky and Bunty are doing a shoot -em up special night so that might be quite good um, and Zypho is obviously doing his usual am stream if it's a Saturday night, I'll be watching, you know, BigClive.com, BigClive Live stuff. At least while he's still doing the lockdown streams. So weekend streams do tend to start a little earlier. Yeah, I mean, Gauntlet was infinite, wasn't it? Which kind of... If you put that many credits into Gauntlet, yeah, the, not having a proper ending is kind of bad. Because you're just putting coins for nothing in the end. I guess it's about the experience with friends. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, go on the four on the Mega Drive is um, a good one. I call it Gauntlet four because it supports four players, I believe, not because it's the fourth game. Because there's no. But then again, there was a third game because there was Gauntlet three on the Spectrum, but that was um, on the eight bits, and that was an odd. Thing which tried to do sort of an isometric perspective. I might have looked at it. No, did I put it on the isometric stream? Not look at it, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, Gauntlet 4, I believe, was four players if you had the adapter. So was it called Gauntlet 4 because they acknowledged Gauntlet 3, or was it called Gauntlet 4 because it's got four player support? In Japan, it was just called Gauntlet. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good port, though. It's. Um, it's. It's Gauntlet, but it's less credit hungry because it's a, you know, a console game. So maybe that would be the preferred way of playing Gauntlet. Even though I didn't like that game at first when I played, because it, it just felt like an older game. It, it doesn't really. Nothing stands out to make it think, oh, this is a fancy Mega Drive game. It's kind of looks kind of old, but at the same time, once you get over that, it's actually a really good Gauntlet game. And maybe the best gauntlet game. Did Gauntlet 2 have an arcade ending? I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I thought Gauntlet 2 was just more of Gauntlet. I, I, I might be wrong. I've never considered Gauntlet 2 to be anything than basically Gauntlet with extra bits. But that might be my own um, misconception. Golf on the Odyssey 2. Is that a suggestion for a future stream, Thomas? Yeah, both Gauntlet games have endless levels, negative one says. That doesn't surprise me. I've never heard anything about them having an ending. <laughs> Let's do Plasma Trail. But I suppose, yeah, if you want some fantasy setting, this does it, but... Again, probably more fun with a friend or three friends. I'm just sitting here mashing through levels and there's no interaction between me and somebody else playing. Uh, 
different. So you get different enemy types, different spawn types, you know, bases for them to spawn from. You're leveling up all the time, which as I said, if I was to stop playing and then enter the same code, Haze and 888, I continue with my experience that I've gained. Which for the time probably wasn't a bad feature. Yeah, I, I can't remember if I ever saw a gauntlet in the arcades. Oh, oh, I can't go across that camera. You know, I've seen images of gauntlet in arcades, but I can't put my, you know, I can't put a memory to seeing one myself. It's not to say I didn't. But, um, follow arrows, yes. That's something the original Gauntlet did not have, is arrows to follow. <laughs> so how do I get across here? Oh, I don't. I go that way. I guess I go down here. Yeah, I go down here. Okay. That's just me not following the arrows correctly. I've got the heartbeat effect because I'm running low on health. Limited levitation. Well, I didn't make much use of that, did I? Konami's Open Golf Championship. Is that... No. Is that the one that runs on Racing Force hardware? Is that the sequel that runs on Racing Force hardware? Anyway, have we seen enough of Gauntlet Legends? One of the newer Atari or Midway games. Again, I, I was a bit unsure whether to include these, but um, so this one was developed by the Atari part of Midway as opposed to uh, Blitz and the like, which were Midway Midway. So I think this one was eligible for the stream. The camera rotating all the time, I'm not keen on either, but of course it has to be that way because it's meant to be a four player game, so you can't really just give one player the control over the camera. Mm. I wonder if um, Golf is doing something like the original Golf in Greats then, because the original Golf in Greats has an unusual feature that I don't think we quite know how it works, but appears to return the colour of the pixel in the middle of the screen, like it's some sort of protection. So it's actually, I mean, the, the where the original golfing greats thinks the balls landed depends entirely on a read from a port, which seems to read something from the frame buffer. We're not quite sure, so that kind of might not be quite correct in main either. So I'm guessing Open Golf might be doing something similar. Again, that probably needs hardware testing at some point, even for the original golfing greats. Oh, I did. I did have a, a bit of a play on Monkey Monkey Shines Thomas before, although it does seem like one where you do really need two players for it to be fun. It's more player versus player. Player versus anything else didn't seem much fun. Anyway. So this level is a bit bigger than the other ones. Yellow warrior needs food, yes. He's level 6, but about to die. And died. So. That was a heroic effort. And there we go. Oh, look, it's a classic looking level. So, a bit of a throwback to how Gauntlet used to look with a, an overhead bonus room. I think they should have left an overhead option in the game, to be honest. That would have been kind of funky. Although this runs slower and laggier than the original Gauntlet. 
Oh, that was extra speed. I should have probably picked that up earlier. Anyway. I think we can move on from um, this shortly. Like, maybe now shortly. So this is um, this is not a prototype. I did just fire this up because I wanted to show the update procedure. Join in any time. But there was another prototype um, suggested earlier, and uh, yeah, I could. No, I don't want to get all the way to the dragon. You get the idea. It's it's gauntlet in three D. Gauntlet Legends. But yes, there was a request came in earlier for Sparks Prototype, another 1992 game. So we can add this to the list of Atari's 1992 output. 1972 to 1992, or non-output, because again, this was not released. So... My name calls this Sparks. The title screen does call it Dr. Sparks Lab. So I'm not sure if um, MAME should be updated with a more complete title or, you know, it, to me that's confusing because the, the title screen does say Dr. Sparks Lab. Although here it does say just Sparks. Now, there are similar games to this that were released. Um, Taito's Cashette Chubit. Is a very similar game. There are other pipe linking games, obviously Pipe Mania and Loops on the 8 bits and probably the 16 bit home computers too. Did any release game use that logo 20 years ago? I don't know the Gaming Hell YouTube thing because um, I used it on my preview image for the stream, but that came from the Arcade Classics, which was also unreleased. Uh, maybe 1992 was just a bad year for Atari. So, you know, much like many of these games, you can choose to start in a different difficulty level. Columns and the likes did this. But, uh, yeah. Is the volume okay? Looks okay. But, yeah, you're building links from side to side. can make things disappear like that too. There we go. Completed one spark which is getting from side to side. that yet. Oop, that's not what I want to do. That was a terrible idea. There we go. Two sparks. You see, I've kind of um, ruined the connection at the bottom there. Because I've blocked it all off, which is not what you want to do in this game. Now, I don't like how this controls. These controls here feel slippy, which is a problem in a puzzle game. They feel slightly oversensitive. And that makes you nervous about pressing a button. Because you think you might move a piece too far or not far enough. So I think Taito's implementation of this idea was better than this. So you can get rid of pieces that way which is kind of handy if you mess up. Now, I don't think I featured this on the single strips, uh, the puzzle game stream I did before. But it was requested, I seem to remember, so I guess this does have its fans. 
The Tato game is Cashiet, also known as Tubit, although I think Tubit is a prototype set, which corrupts after a while. Tubit was also featured in one of the plug and play things that's emulation based. I don't think they actually fixed the issue with it uh, corrupting. So I think that plug and play actually corrupts after a while. From what I was told, anyway. Hmm. Now, there's probably techniques to this that I'm not making good use of. More pieces, and there we go. Bonus with blank spaces. The the uh, the p pieces just speed up like any puzzle game. Cow. I did start on the medium level, not the easy level. You see bonuses for crossing the things that are in the playfield, flashing them. That's a bit different. You don't see that in many games of this style. So Atari trying to innovate a bit there, I guess. I mean, I don't remember columns having any pieces you meant to pick up with the falling blocks. I mean, maybe for good reason. Maybe it's a little bit annoying. But it's a bit different. Um. As you can see, I'm not doing an especially good job of playing this game. I need to get rid of that. There we go, that's got rid of some pieces. That is a relief, because I was struggling there. But, yeah, I mean, in the early 90s, everybody was trying to create their own sort of popular puzzle game. The likes of Pure Pure really took off. Uh, the likes of this didn't. And obviously, Tetris has always been popular just for being Tetris. You know, even the, the creative Tetris was trying to do other things like Weltris and Hattris. And very few of them actually gained the popularity that maybe was expected. Atari had Clax as well, which we'll probably look at shortly. Clax seemed to have come before Columns, which is something I'll talk about in a bit. Because Columns... Uh, yeah, co you always, I always think of Columns as the original... Uh, Oh, I didn't want to get rid of all those. That, that was that was the chain I was trying to make. I forgot the arrow piece would do that. <laughs> Except that's not what I'm to do either. No, uh, what? No. Uh... Oh, well, I failed. Yeah, cash it to uh, tube it from Taito, Mr. Out of Heaven. I did mention that earlier. Oh, no Zypho stream tonight. He's on holiday. I did not know that, Retro on them. Oh, I might I might watch the uh, Nicky and Bunty stream, though. I did not know Zypho was going to be on holiday, though. But I think, yeah, I think he did mention, actually, last week, didn't he? I just didn't know if it was which stream he was talking about. Um... I could I could have um, 
stolen the stolen the Amstream and, and fired up uh, WinApe. If I know, no, I, I don't think I'd do that. People would be very confused. But yeah, I'll probably check out Nicky and Bunty stream then, because they'll be doing some shoot 'em ups, and that's always good entertainment too. As he only just announced he's not doing that. Is this one of those maybe, maybe, maybe if I get packed in time and then didn't get packed in time? I still keep looking at the, 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 the Blackpool thing and thinking maybe I should just get tickets. But it's a bit a bit pricey getting up there and finding somewhere to stay. Let's get rid of that one. Messed up again. <laughs> I'll get this eventually. Yeah, it makes sense. You don't want to be trying to fit a stream in and be going on holiday, really. Especially not with kids. There's always something going to come up. <laughs> as, as you can see, this is a fairly basic puzzle game. Again, Atari 92. Didn't get released. The thing is, by 92 as well, while companies were trying to produce all these puzzle games, uh, Street Fighter 2 was kind of dominating the arcades, and people just wanted Street Fighter 2 games. It's like, puzzle game? Nah, I'm Street Fighter 2 game. The Norbreak's not even that cheap, though, is it? Some of the rooms are like 100 quid or something, as if it was staying Costado. It looked a bit pricey, especially considering the the, uh, the standards. Plus, trains up there, it's, especially if you want to get there at a decent time. Not great. Um, anyway, Sparks, or Dr. Spark Lab. Puzzle game from Atari. Didn't get released. It's playable, but there, there are better puzzle games out there. And I, I, I don't hate Atari, by the way. I know a lot of the things I've been saying about Atari have been, oh, that's not too good, that's not great, that's not amazing. But we have been looking at prototypes, games that failed, games that didn't make it to market, and a lot of them didn't make it to market for good reason. So Atari have loads of good games, but we have been looking at some of the, the not-so-good ones on the stream. Um, where shall we go now? Where shall we go now? So have a look at another recently emulated proto. I have looked at this one on a previous stream. But uh, this is Cyberstorm. This time from 1993. Uh, yeah, this play expo in Blackpool, the gaming how YouTube thing. I believe that is on this year. So from failed 1992 protos, we have a failed 1993 proto. Um, I think from Thunder Joes is okay, Mr. After Heaven. It's not one of my favourite the released games. It's kind of a bit janky, especially the um, Rolling Thunder Light stages. Yeah, I would like to go one year. Oh look, we've got the 20, 20 years anniversary screen on another prototype. Even though technically this is 93. Also, it looks like I might need to adjust the video offset slightly on this one because there are cases where you can see lines and slightly misaligned layers. So it might be like Batman where, I have, where some adjustments are needed. There it is again on another failed game. <laughs> Did you think maybe that that screen was, uh, you know, doomed any game it was put in? You know, if that screen was in your resources, your game was never going to make it out the door. Uh, anyway, just have the Atari Dong this time. There you go. So it can be Dead Eye, Zoltan, Nitro, GX2, uh, Tarsus, or Vandal. Will be GX2 because GX2 is probably something that came before the GX4000.
Yeah, even when there was a fighting game craze on, uh, apparently Atari couldn't get fighting into production. Hey, Mitch, you're welcome. <laughs> the twenty years, the twenty year curse. But yeah, I think I think some of the layers need shifting a pixel left on this one. I seem to remember I couldn't beat any carrots on this either. So, so we've got lobster guy in a suit. I don't know. I'm shooting the, the pat the score things from Doctor Spock's lab at me. Computer's playing with tactics I would usually use, which is just spam attack, spam attack, spam attack. Fortunately, the computer is better at spamming attacks than me. Um, this has fatalities too. Well, if I could actually beat anybody, I might stand a chance of, of doing one. If I can map button mash. Made it uh, Mace the Dark Age made it to market, didn't it? And uh, Primal Rage. This is an easy setting, hold on. Game options. Uh, difficulty. Easy. It's probably the book stuff, no. Unlimited hits, yes. Editor function, hmm. Time strike, no, uh, no. No, what, no, easy. There's any right punch button. Okay. I think I put it on easy now. The gong sound is a standard sound effect. Uh, doesn't spell. I don't know why they went with a gong. It doesn't sound much like a coin being inserted, but it is um, definitely iconic. Unlimited hits, I'm guessing, is just some combo related thing. I'm not sure. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't know how to play this game, unfortunately. I don't have any strategy. Even easy, it seems to just. If you jump, it does that. Problems with player two inputs. Um, I wonder if that's the game or the main. Might warrant looking at. Just getting in the corner here. I don't think this is any easy on easy. <laughs> and the fact it seems to have like seven buttons per player, and I don't think it uses them, might suggest that it's not properly mapped or the service mode doesn't list things properly. I don't know. Yes, I'm, I, I'm a loser. Fighting game with lame hand drawn robots that spam attacks at you all the time. Wait, I can do that attack. That changes nothing because I can't do it reliably. I think this is one of those games where I say, if you want to see the other levels, I've put the attract mode on. So 
So, can I join the second player? I mean, apparently I can start a two-player game. So, I have that attack. Player 2's button 1 and 2 don't do anything. Q doesn't do anything. W doesn't do anything. E does something. These aren't mapped. Yeah, the default button mappings I think are wrong. Because player 2 seems to use these three buttons. So, those... those I shouldn't map Q, should I? So yeah, you, you can map three buttons to that player. And, and player one's buttons, one and two, seem the same. So now I've got two different strength punches. I don't know. Um, what's in service mode? The, bu the buttons in general seem a bit of a mess on this. I don't know if... Um, yeah, it might be that they're just incorrectly mapped. Um, controls test. Just green button. Um, right kick. So I unmap the controls. So this is uh, probably not the most thrilling content. So do these even show up in service mode? They show up as up, down, left, right. Yeah, that makes no sense. So they're not even showing up in service mode properly. Uh... Yeah, I guess the controls in service mode are wrong and the control mappings in game are wrong and there's something just very wrong with how the... Um... The, the, the controls are mapped on that one. Anyway, I couldn't get anywhere in that. Um, maybe it's just because it's a fighting game and I'm terrible at fighting games. But, um, yeah, I played that before and didn't really enjoy it, so you've seen that one. What do I think of FPGA versus emulation in 2021? I think both have their place. Um, you know, the advantages to FPGAs and advantages to traditional emulation. Oh, and uh, Wagner has just subscribed. Welcome to the the channel, Wagner. If you're watching, feel free to say hi. And hey, Peter, welcome also. It's good to have you in these, these streams. I, I noticed you joined the, uh, the last one, and it's good to see you again in this one. Hope you're doing well. But um, anyway, we better have a look at another game, because I've just been boring you all with um, test modes of Cyberstorm, where the buttons don't seem to be mapped correctly, which, yeah, might explain why there's no two-player tournaments of that thing. Needs looking into, unless the prototype is just broken. Um, so, while we're on the subject of failed games from 1992, does this require a mouse? I do. It does. So here we go. Our favourite Atari logo. The 1972 to 1992 Atari Games logo for yet another... Um, another failed game. Um, I think, well, FPGAs have their limits to uh, flat view. They're not inherently better. The problems with them, you know, and you, you've still got to... I mean, some of them don't... Even, some, in some cases, the latency is still there because some of them have still got to, you know, rescale the output and the like. Uh, it's not always the magic box people think it is. It's not always perfect. Um, but, um, you know, there are different approaches. And the FPGAs, I can't see doing newer systems. They're, they're always sort of, sort of hitting their limits. So, I don't know. But yes, this is Atari's Arcade Classics, which is um, an attempt to do updated versions of some of their classic games. So we'll insert a coin. In fact, it's Centipede and Missile Command, isn't it? So let's play Super Centipede. And 
Nice. Play it badly. Yeah, we've done a lot of 90s Atari today. Failed Atari today. Um, if anybody would like to look at some other Atari. I mean, I might do Klax in a bit. Which is technically 80s Atari. Even though the intro says it is the 90s. But yeah, um, in terms of the Atari prototypes I've played, I think maybe this is one of the ones I'm more surprised didn't get released. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's just reworked versions of two of the classics. But at the same time, making those classics appeal to a newer audience isn't necessarily a bad idea. I don't know what the centipede sounds here. It seems like it's trying to talk at me. Also, the, the the number of shots you can have on one screen at any time is a bit annoying. You, know, you can only have one shot on time, screen at a time, which makes the firing a little frustrating. But I guess that's the game design here. <laughs> no, and FP FPGAs are a lot more work per thing, and if you're dealing with odd hacked hardware, you know, variants, it's not always as easy to just quickly test something. And a lot of what I've done in MAME is emulating, you know, random Korean boards, which are semi-clones of something else, and it gets a bit messy once you, you've, you've got to work with FPGAs and... You can't just, you know, do a cheap little code mod. And then, obviously, if you're doing things like um, your protection chips on boards, you're sometimes having to implement an entire extra CPU core in an FPGA, which, again, is a lot of work. A lot more work than just doing it in code. Whereas in Maiden, it's relatively easy. Um, Final Lap was licensed by Atari, apparently, but I don't think there's any sets that show Atari as a logo, so I don't think we're going to be doing a Final Lap, Cow. Might be Pole Position as a licensed game if we're going to do some, some licensed Atari. Okay, so that's the uh, the Super Centipede version. Let's have a look at the Missile Command update. Hey Evie, I uh, hope your day's been good then, and thank you for dropping by. So I've been streaming for about two and a half hours, so I should be done in about half an hour, if you want to chat then. Yeah, there's there's probably tons of tons of um, Korean games for other platforms as well. I imagine things like the MSX. Um, it's an updated centipede and missile command, Andrea. It's not really uh, reskinned. It's a new game. I mean, this runs on a 68K, I believe, whereas the originals were 8-bit processors. But yeah, um, you know, I I'm surprised this one didn't get released. It's nothing special, but they're reasonable updates to the classic games. They play well, they're smooth. And, you know, I'd, I'd take this over Gardens of the Hood, for example. Gameplay-wise, yeah, there's not much new. At least not then. Maybe if you get further, there's more to it. Yeah, um, Atari did license quite a few Namco games, although quite often without any kind of display. Uh, Xevious, yeah. I, I noticed when I was testing for the stream that the Atari Xevious sets in MAME sometimes glitch out when you credit them up. Which is kind of odd. Um, I don't know if I can show that on stream or not. I might try. But yeah, I, I'm not sure there are any real inno innovations in that centipede version, apart from the updated graphics. But maybe it has like bosses or something. I think this has a boss if you get far enough. Um, I 
don't know for sure. Yeah, that might be the problem. Maybe nobody just wanted classic arcade games in 92 because they weren't quite classic enough by that point. They're probably still places with the original machines. Of course, you did have a lot of versions of these on home systems, unofficial and official anyway. So that maybe didn't help. This place with a trackball, Johnny, they didn't make the same mistake as with the Marble Man. If this had played with a mouse, yeah, you could fully understand. I mean, uh, with a joystick, you could fully understand why it didn't uh, get released. I'm doing it with a mouse because, you know, that's the controls I have. But no, they, they did actually get that right. This does control with a, um, a trackball. And uh, that is all my cities gone. Bye bye Paris, bye bye New York. Yeah, they're all gone, they're all gone. But yeah, you see, analog controls, trackball, two trackballs, two players. And all right, Evie, um, yeah, I'll talk to you, I'll, I'll talk to you after, after the stream about work then. But yes, uh, the ill-fated Atari 20 years. Maybe it could have done with a third game. Maybe a two-in-one isn't quite enough. Maybe if there'd been a third game in this, it would have been a bit better. Acceptable losses, oh dear. Um, but yeah, I don't mind this one. I think this is actually a fairly decent update. Just maybe doesn't add enough to the game, the formula. But, you know, if your arcade didn't have a centipede or missile command, you know, you could have done worse than have this one there. So, shall we go with a game that did get released? So you're on about two hours, uh, two and a half hours. <laughs> the, the, the best logo. Do we know any more games with that logo? <laughs> Uh, so another puzzle game, Clax version six. So you see, it says it is the nineties, and there is time for Clax, copyright nineteen eighty nine. Hmm. So it wasn't the nineties. Off the wall. Off the wall is a fun one. I might put off the wall in it. So yeah, Clax. It's a columns-like game, but as I said, interestingly, this is copyright 1989. Columns, I believe, is 1990. So this came before Columns. But yeah, you're piling up pieces and um, lining them up. You can, you can, yeah, vertically, horizontally. Or diagonally, so you know, like columns, three in a row. Wave. Um, the thing with clacks is you can stack pieces on here, so that is sort of the novelty. You can you can stack pieces and throw them down in the order you want, as long as you don't miss them. Also, you can throw them back up with the up button if you want to. I want the orange. If I want to throw the red up there and catch it again later, you can do that and change the order they're on your pad. Which is kind of an interesting mechanic. So it actually has more in the terms of game mechanics than um, Columns did. But at the same time, I've never been keen on how you're kind of only using... The, the, you know, this lower part of the screen. Obviously, things are dropping from higher up. But then it also feels like the area you've got to do anything is kind of small. I don't know. Obviously, it never was quite as popular as, say, Columns. But I do actually think this is a good game. I think this is a decent little puzzle game. Probably deserves more recognition. I mean, you can't stack too much. You can only stack four, otherwise they fall down. And, you know, falling down is bad. I think falling down basically costs you a life, doesn't it? But yeah. 
That's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, see, I lost my eyes by him. Yeah, this one... Yeah, this it was around the Lynx period, wasn't it? And I, I totally did a really good job of the Lynx, actually. I mean, not many people talk about the Lynx these days. But in terms of the quality of the output software on the Lynx, it, it's actually right up there. I think Atari were doing a better job with the home stuff on the Lynx than they were of uh, some of their arcades at uh, this point. And of course this is one of those games that uh, quite famously got two ports to the Mega Drive, a different version for Japan and for everywhere else, along with Marble Madness and um, something like Prince of Persia too. So this time you have to get diagrams to clear it, which you know is encouraging you to actually use the game mechanics that are in place if you want to finish it. And you've got more colours coming into play. So you know I can get a diamond there. And oh, that's not what I want to do. Uh, where are we going? <laughs> it also can be quite hard to judge things because of the perspective, which may be the downfall of the game. I'm going to get chained, but they're not diamond chains, unfortunately. That's not one too. Uh, yeah, I forget what I want to do here. And put that there. And put that there. I didn't play that very well. Clax was on the two six hundred. I didn't know that, Costardo. Uh, win a t-shirt. Probably that was a very Atari thing, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you get good at this, it becomes quite easy to play. I do wonder how much easy it would be without the perspective. It's always something I've kind of wondered with this game. But would it work? Um, I don't know. I've never really considered that. Could probably have done with some better music. I mean, if you think of something like Columns, the music's kind of iconic, whereas this is quiet. Almost too quiet. Yeah, effectively, effectively your um, play area is bought about six by six tile weight. I don't know what tile wave is, I didn't read it. Does that mean I've got to get complete rows across? Probably, because that's what it's showing, isn't it? Yeah. I messed that up if that's what I'm meant to be doing. Oh no, it's just just that number of times. I, I don't know. No, okay. It's not that I have to get them all the way across. Okay, that's uh, good. Oh, I'm failing. Atari Tetris had a lot of music. Spe speaking of, shall we go to Atari Tetris? Shall we rewind the clock a little bit? I mean, that's Clax. I don't think it's a bad game. Uh, I think it's a good example of a late 80s, early 90s puzzle game that wasn't Tetris. And there you go, there's your t-shirt offer, yeah. You see, win the t-shirt. Uh, well, in fact, you can buy a t-shirt, not not win it, buy it. Maybe there's a way to win it too, but you can buy one. You just have to survive the tower wave. Uh, um, not many consoles had a 15-year run. No, they didn't. I mean, the current ones, yeah, but back in the day, no. Um, so, yeah, I was going to play Tetris. So 
So I'm going to load up the cocktail set just to be a bit different. Now this is a cocktail set. It's for two players. Obviously it runs on a vertical screen. I've always said I wish there was a proper vertical version of Tetris though. I, I can never understand why there isn't. This version is a vertical version of Tetris, but you know, even being a vertical te version of Tetris, you only get like half the screen because it's a cocktail cabinet. A full screen vertical Tetris, I think would have been really good. And there wasn't one. Not even an unofficial one. But yeah, okay, I say vertical, this was actually a table, so vertical oriented monitor, but actually flat on the table. So it's not even a big vertical screen, but you know, playing Tetris on a, you know, a cabinet really designed for a shoot and for something like that, I think would have been really good. But Tetris licensing was kind of funky, so maybe the Tetris company just didn't allow it. I really don't know. You think Atari Tetris is the best version? Um, I mean, personally, I'd probably go with the you know the newer um, Akira ones, the uh, Tetris Grandmaster games. But as an early implementation of Tetris, it's it's not bad. It's playable. It just lacks some of the features that make the uh, the newer ones a bit easier to play. Also. Give me a long piece. They're, they're a bit late now. It's probably not too wise. I'm desperate here. Oh dear, I need to clear one more line and I'm going to fail. I do know how to play Tetris, honestly. Apparently my Tetris skills... <laughs> Slight of fact matter, but the Game Boy version, the Game Boy version is iconic. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure it's the best overall version of Tetris. You know, it, it's got no colour to it, but it one many many people have fond memories of, and it plays rather well too. Sega Tetris, I don't like. I, I don't like Sega's implementation of Tetris. Never really have. Um, I think. There's, there's some more obscure Tetris games that aren't too bad. I think Philco's Zionix is quite playable. Um, although that might use stolen code from this for all I know. It's Philco after all. Um, bad versions of Tetris, obviously. Final Tetris, the Korean thing. Tetris Fighter, the Korean thing. Uh, payout and Price Tetris, which are just horribly rigged versions of Tetris where you barely get to play Tetris. Because um, you know they want they want to make you think if you're good at Tetris, you can win money. You'd have to be very good at Tetris to win anything off those because they're really rigged against you. Pardon me. Yeah, I find Sega Tetris a bit stiff, I think, with fellow Jasper. And sorry, sorry if I've been missing uh, chat messages. Yeah, Nintendo and Tetris for the home market, hence the whole mess with the Mega Drive version. What's funny is with the uh, Mega Drive Tetris, uh, the Mega Play Card, Mega Tech cartridge for Tetris is actually really common and contains the exact ROM that would have been in the Mega Drive um, cartridges. But I guess because Mega tech was technically an arcade they could get away with it even if it is really just a, a mega drive with a timer system and extra menu but i suppose yeah they probably could they probably could release it on the mega tech because mega tech isn't a home system so it meant that development wasn't wasted i suppose might be why it's so common as well if they reused half the ROMs that were meant to go into the Mega Drive cartridges. But yeah, good music's important in a Tetris game. This definitely has good music. Might not be the classic Tetris theme people know from the Game Boy, but it's still a good tune. 
Look at such teams. Sega System E version of Tetris is kind of curious because that's a completely different version for Master System based hardware. Oh, I messed that up. Oh, no, no. Lots of concentration and you fail so easily. Yeah, there were various versions of Tetris, weren't there? Two versions on the NES. Hatris isn't really Tetris, though, Johnny Bond. Hatris is a different concept. Um, I don't mind Hatris. I prefer Hatris over Weltris, but uh, personal preferences. But yeah, there you go. Atari Tetris, a classic, really. Um, hmm. Why not just go for a classic released Atari game, Championship Sprint from 86. Well, I've not bothered to map any controls, but we'll see how we go. Choose a track. Uh, that one looks nice. So yeah, this is one of those classic overhead single screen racing games. with shortcuts if you get the timing right. I'm the blue car, by the way, so I'm in last place and doing terribly. You really want a wheel to play this, not a keyboard. My sensitivity is off for the turns. Now, as we discussed in the previous stream, this isn't quite as original as it seems because um, Taito had Super Dead Heat, which kind of does this formula, but with four screens, but with all the things like the shop before Atari did it. Although obviously this is technically a sequel to the older Atari Sprint games. The computer cheats. Yeah, the computer cheats on Super Sprint. The, the computer cheats on a lot of these. If you play, say, Super Off Road or Indie Heat, the computer cheats on all of those too. And yeah, I had this on the Spectrum 2 Alpha with the track editor, I believe, where you could just put towers together together to make your tracks. The tracks weren't as complex as the arcade version, but still, I, I do remember having fond memories of putting together my own little tracks on it. I think that was the only real difference between Championship Sprint and Super Sprint on the Spectrum, wasn't it? Super Sprint had the track editor. I mean, Championship Sprint had the track editor, whereas Super Sprint didn't. Otherwise, they were basically the same game. But yeah, fun little ports, ports on the Spectrum. Many, many hours wasted on those. Yeah, I always have time for a game like this. Um, even newer games, I spent ages with the Super Skid Marks on the Amiga. Uh, WEC Le Mans is definitely not an easy game either, Cow. Uh, there's, there's, there's a game with laps and final ones that is kind of tricky too. But discussion of that game is banned on the streams. I always like the the, the uh, tornadoes you have to. How many games have tornadoes in? Um, I mean, there's Cyclone, although that, you never see the tornado on the Spectrum. Uh, Toe Jarno, this. Tornado Outbreak, which is one of my favourite PlayStation 3 games, also on the Wii. Um, tornadoes in games. I mean, any, any game with editor back in the day, I, I, want, I, I would buy. Sometimes I'd be disappointed, other times, you know, I'd enjoy them. I was always disappointed by the Scalex trick game that had a track editor, and you could make the track overlap like there should be a bridge, but it never showed any kind of track overlap or bridge, which I guess, from a technical point of view, is understandable, but as a kid, disappointed me.
So, there we go. And there we go. So, we've got about 10 minutes of this um, stream. I don't know if there's enough Tornado games, Bob, unfortunately. If there were more Tornado games, maybe. Paperboy has a Tornado. Hmm. I mean, some games have Tornado attacks. Uh, Fatal Fury definitely has a Tornado attack, doesn't it? A lot of the fighting games do, actually. King of Fighters games, I believe. Uh, do they count? Not sure. Tasmania on the Mega Drive, kind of. You can become a tornado. So maybe, maybe there were enough games with tornadoes. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll have a think about it. I don't believe there's a Sharknado arcade game. There probably should have been. I need to stop winning all these races. Uh, Metal Maniacs might have tornadoes, but doesn't work. Tumble Pop, some enemies turn into tornadoes. Yeah, I think it's it, yeah, it's probably quite a common attack and um, transformation. The games with just outright tornadoes in. Hmm. Explosion. I can fire Metal Maniacs at preview you want, but it doesn't do anything worth seeing, Cal, unfortunately. I mean, Phil Bennett did have Metal Maniacs fully working at one point, apparently, but um, yeah, he lost that in a hard drive crash. Anyway, that was Championship Sprint. Um... He spun out in the final <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, where next? Fire Beast. Another Atari prototype. That has a trackball. So we're better than this mouse support. Um, Gene Rally. I've not played that one, fellow Jasper. So, I am a mighty wizard. I must use my powers to protect the friendly dwarves as they dig for buried chests found at the end of your journey. Oh yeah, I played this one before, didn't I? Select the level. I like the mountain drawing there. An expedition is starting one valley to the treasure cave. Oh, don't do that. That's a silly thing to do. Poor dwarf. But, you know, I complete the level anyway. Okay, so yeah, two firing directions. I'm trying to protect the dwarves. Unfortunately, um, let's try and do some better button controls. That's better. So, say protect them up. It's a bit missing our commandy, but you know the wavy lines. Maybe I think I protected all the dwarves this time. So there we go. You can see all four going down. Got one valley left. So these move in much more random patterns than the missile commanders missiles. But there we go. The tune sounds like Schumann's Happy Farmer. It did sound very familiar, yes. So in this level you can only move in the passages that have been dug, which is not a limit that applies to the, the things that are trying to kill everything, which is kind of annoying. And I died. To continue. Okay. 
But yeah. I think this one had potential. I mean, this is Atari in the 80s again. I mean, this is back to 83. So I think this would have been quite impressive in 83. But again, you can, you can see if you go to 80s Atari's prototypes, they're a lot more impressive than 90s Atari prototypes. But then again, so were Atari's released games in the 80s, you know. I think the majority of the 80s Atari prototypes are better than the released games from the 90s. Which isn't the greatest situation, but... You know, maybe there would have been better resurrecting this idea than whatever they were trying to do with... Yeah, you can collect the treasure too, I forgot that. Whatever they're trying to do with, you know, um, Danger Express that we featured at the start of the stream. So there we go. They dug the tunnels. I collected the treasure. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's trying to kill the dwarves. But uh, you can't breathe fire on your own dwarves. Or hurry them along, unfortunately. That would be, probably have been a good game mechanic if you could hurry them along, but you can't. Maybe they're just raindrops in a very violent rainstorm. Cosmic snakes. It's a simple concept, but again, this is 83. Yeah, I unnecessarily crashed into one. Um, It's not the most thrilling game, but... You know, it plays quite well. Personally, don't have any real complaints about this one. I'm not going to spend too long on it because we're five minutes from stream end. But uh, again, it's a prototype for a reason. But I like games where you play as dragons. We had, we had this discussion on the last stream. Games where you're playing as a dragon or riding a dragon. And this is another one of those. So if I do a dragon stream, this would have to... Yeah, the level ends if you collect the treasure, Bob. So, so there's more to it here. You, now you've got to blow up barriers that are in the way. Unfortunately, I'm dead. So, well, the dwarf did make it. I did not. But yeah, I did collect all the treasure on one of them, but you've got to wait until the dwarves have dug the passages so you can collect the treasure. So it's kind of a survival thing. But yeah, I think it works works pretty good. Pretty well as a concept. Not much more to it, but probably one I would have played back in the day. Um, let's go. This one is also... What's controls? Again, I need track wheel. Cloud Nine. So we're doing a few 80s prototypes. Another 83 prototype this time. Cloud Nine. Could have done with maybe a fancier title screen. But yeah. what's this one all about then? It's got tornadoes in it. <laughs> maybe Atari like tornadoes. So big clouds, other things, shoot clouds, and you know the clouds are trying to flood the place with rain, and you don't want it to get flooded. And so yeah, I'll credit up and you'll see. Now this one does glitch after a while in Maine. There are replays where the graphics just corrupt after a while, which is probably due to it being a prototype. But yeah, classic sort of shooter style gameplay. There we go, clouds are gone. Trackball controls again, because Atari did like trackball controls back back in the day, so you had like Centipede and Marble Madness and this which didn't get released. Now you can destroy all these, you can destroy that thing down there. 
You don't want to raindrops dropping in the water. Uh, that's a bad thing, I think, to get. You can wrap from side to side, which is handy. So in some ways, the the, the uh, wrapping around to avoid enemies reminds me of Cat and Mouse, which is the Zachariah game we played before. But, um, getting too much water in there, I believe. Got me. Yeah, trackball could break quite easily if people abuse them. Oh yeah, if if you if you get in the water, you turn into if you get in the water, you turn into water, which means you can attack the fire like that. And um, but apparently, water drops are bad for you, even though water's good for you. I I don't know. Slightly confused in that sense. But um. Let's get rid of this cloud. Bug might be doing a stream tonight. Might. I don't often catch Nova Bug streams, but um, we'll see. We'll see where I end up. Anyway, you get the idea. It's a shooter with a trackball with a wall. There's quite a lot of different elements here. Not sure how they all really gel together but again for 83 you would have probably remembered this had you played it in an arcade unfortunately marble man using a joystick is probably what ultimately killed marble man although it went up on the bridge because uh, marble madness with the joystick is no fun at all I don't think anybody's going to do that live on stream. At least not me, Cal. Yeah, see, this is where it gl look. It's glitched at the bottom there a bit. I don't know what's happening there, but yeah, that is where it glitches sometimes. Um, down the bottom. It's probably because it's a prototype, and I'm assuming maybe it's meant to be spawning a different enemy type that doesn't work or isn't programmed in properly. Could be an emulation bug. Could be some protection they've thrown in, but I don't think this is protected. So I don't know. But it does glitch out at the bottom of the screen there sometimes. And I don't think I ever saw the tornadoes. So, um, Cloud9 is that. One last game, because we are over three hours now, is the one that uh, was also requested earlier. Aka ah. is this? This is also a trackball game. Because, you know, why wouldn't it be? Yeah, it, it, it does look like quite a lot rolled into one. Now, I always think this just looks like Cartman from South Park, for some reason. That title screen just looks like Cartman. Um, but this is quite a confusing game. You've got three buttons. You've got Fire, Power Blaster, and Zoom. You can start on different levels, which all have fancy patterns. Let's just start on one level. So you're firing from the middle, but you can zoom in if things get close to attack them. So when things are this close, you press zoom in, and then when they're not close, you zoom back out to attack them from distance. So again, it's a base defense type game, but you know, they're, they're too close, so I have to zoom in to protect my actual base close up. Yeah, this is a nice original concept. I don't know why this one wasn't released. It is maybe a little confusing, the zoom mechanic, but... That's not mean it's a bad game. And obviously the patterns are quite good. And I do like the art style of this one. It's got a very Williams look, hasn't it? It looks more like, say, a, a Williams game, so the Robotron Defenders. It kind of almost plays like one, too. But 
the flashing colours are, are very, you know, Williams Midway. That's what I'm saying. The colour cycling. The sound effects are also a little bit. But yeah, you've got these abstract flower patterns all over the place. And it's it's an attractive looking game. You can see the area you're attacking by what flashes when you attack. We have the 80s prototypes of, from Atari. This is probably one of the ones that surprises me more to see it was never released. It's also got kind of a tempesty feel, obviously with the, the like tunnel effects. Sort of levels look almost like they could be tempest levels in the design. Yeah, it's got some cool effects. There we go. Yeah, this is the final game for the stream, because I am over three hours now. So I would like to thank everybody for, you know, joining. joining. Been plenty of people who had a good chat. I do apologise if I've missed any messages or requests. I can probably do another Atari stream at some point. So here's hoping though maybe some other prototypes show up eventually. And I can cover those at the start of the stream. But I don't know. I wouldn't hold my breath on. Apparently Marble Man is gonna end up on some mini arcade unit or something. But it may end may end up being a reproduction or a hack version of the game. I don't know, FPGA based arcade. Who knows? I mean, maybe if we're lucky, they've sourced the actual trackball version of the game. But I have a feeling it's going to end up being a hack version of the game that's not suitable to add to main. No, it's, it's you're welcome, Costado. Again, you are you are one of the regulars here who always has something to say, always has a contribution, little facts and the like, which I, I really enjoy, you know. And uh, especially, I, you know, I enjoy it when people tell me things I don't know. For example, uh, the Primal Rage 2 trick with the playable dinosaurs. That was pretty cool. I think that was... Was that the Gaming Hell YouTube thing said that? You're still trying to see how far it goes. Well, once I'm out of lives, then that's as far as I'll be going on it. And I'm losing them quite rapidly at the moment. There we go, game over. So, yeah, the worst thing about this game is probably the title. Also, I think I'd probably need to initialize the NV RAM to stop high scores being corrupt or something. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I do appreciate things like that, Gaming Hell. And, again, people's opinions on the games. People have been sharing lots of opinions. And I'm, I'm always happy to hear those. You know, always interested to see what people... Um, name is a play on the design's initials. Yeah, but it's not a memorable name, and that's not a, a readable title screen. It's like, um, this is the problem. People are going to play this and not know what it was called. And that's not great. So, that might have not helped it. You know, people aren't going to go, oh, I played that great Atari prototype test game, and I can't remember what it's called. To their friends they're just gonna go i played a game it was good uh i don't know they're, they're not gonna know what to call it so it wouldn't have helped i feel that's not making any sense is it yeah target outpost might have been a better name um i mean Back, but again, it's kind of proto tower defense type thing, although only one tower in this case, um, which they obviously Atari did with Rampart as a proper tower defense game, which is a shame. I didn't get to play Rampart. I would have liked to play Rampart, and maybe Indiana Jones, and maybe Paperboy, and maybe APB. There's a lot of Atari games I didn't get to play, but I was looking at a lot of the prototypes, wasn't it? Uh, which are interesting, if often not amazing. Um, 
Unfortunately, there's no time for pole position or anything else, or Xevious. But I will leave you with the uh, Cartman-like title screen of this game. And I will now take that off the screen. I will now go to my full screen face here and say thank you to everybody once again. And I hope I ca can catch you on the next one. So I don't know when that's going to be, but when it is, I will try and let, make sure I you know, schedule the stream with plenty of notice. But uh, see you soon. Take care, everybody.